Hello, hello everybody. Okay, this is our second uh, unit that we're going online with. We're going, you, as you know, uh, in the beginning of the term, we finished unit 12, uh, change, and then we skipped 13, and this is online. I think you've already saw it, you've already seen it, or you must have uh, started studying with unit 13. And then we did unit 14, which was culture, and now we are doing our last unit, which is unit 15, performance, which you will find in your book starting from page 91. As you now know, in the first part, I always tell you what is going to be studied or what is going to be covered in this unit. Okay, so this is what is expected of you, which we will go through uh, in detail. First, let's brainstorm together if the unit is called performance, performance coming from the verb perform, to perform, okay, what would this lesson be about? What does the word performance mean? Okay, how is it related to business? Is it important that you measure performance and you coach performance and you follow performance and you try to improve performance? How can you do that? How can you evaluate performance? Is it important in the first place to evaluate performance, to assess it, to see if the staff is doing well, doing better, if the performance has risen or has decreased? And if you want to evaluate or to assess or to judge this performance, how can you? Is there one type of performance or is there more than one? Okay. When you want to evaluate performance, you do something called a performance appraisal. Okay, here, remember this word, appraisal is a noun that comes from the verb to appraise, not praise, but appraise. Appraise is to evaluate. You are evaluating someone, you are an appraiser, E-R. You are being evaluated, you become an Z. So remember those four words, appraisal, noun, appraise is the verb, appraiser is the one who is doing the appraisal, and appraise is the one who is being appraised. And remember, it's appraise, not praise. To praise is to say something good, to say you're a good uh, worker, you're a good employee. But appraise is to evaluate this performance. Now let's go to page 90. On page 90, we have the first text that we have. This text is divided to parts A, B, C, D, and so on. And later on, we will be required to put uh, a suitable title to each part or to match the titles that we have on this page to the uh, paragraphs. Okay, a title will give you the summary or the main idea of the uh, paragraph. Okay, we have a situation here. It's about Sisu. Sisu, please follow with me. Uh, Sisu is Wales' largest marine. Okay. Aquarium, which attracts over seven, 75,000 visitors a year. Director and partner Alison Lee Wilson describes how the company introduced an appraisal system that has proved to be a key motivator for its 25 staff. So what do we have here? We have a marine aquarium. The word marine is always related to water. An aquarium is a water container. It's like a zoo where you only find sea animals. You find turtles, you find sea snakes, you find fish of course, you can find dolphins and so on and so forth. So this is like a zoo for fish, for uh, sea animals and 75,000 people visit it every year and how many people do they have? They have 25 people and this company started 
an appraisal system, a system to evaluate performance. And she says that it was a key motivator for staff. It was a way to motivate her staff. It was one of the main ways to motivate staff. As you can see at the bottom here, we have all the, I've provided some meanings, difficult words just to help you get going. What is uh, Alison going to do now? She is going to give us the process, how she developed in her appraisal system from one system to the other. Okay, in this unit, as I said in the beginning, we're going to learn about different ways of appraisals or appraising stuff. How did she first start her appraisal system? When we started our appraisals, we're more of an informal chat as we grew we decided to implement twice yearly former, formal appraisals. We wanted to make sure that employees' contributions fitted the goals of the business, and we also wanted to have the chance to recognize good performance and address any issues. So how did they first start? Informally, an unofficial, through an unofficial conversation. Right, like the, for example, she would call one of her staff and members, and she would say, "So how is everything? How are you doing? I think you're doing well. No, I think this needs to be uh, improved." And the staff member also would say, uh, "I'm okay, but I need this. I don't. I'm not happy with that." Just informal, and she would get. She would sense if the employee is satisfied or not, and also if the employer uh, is satisfied or not. As we grew, as we increased, as we became bigger, we decided what, to do something different, which is twice a year, they would do a formal appraisal through a form, a written form, okay, where the employee would write down or the employer, let's see how, what happens here, to make sure that the employee's contributions fitted the goals, okay? We also wanted to have the chance fitted. The goals means they met the objectives of the uh, company or of the place or whatever. And they wanted to have the chance to recognize good performance. If one of the employees is performing well, let's identify it. Let's recognize it. Let us tell him or tell her this is good performance. If there are problems, let's address it. Let's solve it. Let's find a solution for it. Okay, I want you to notice those underlined expressions because will be they're important later for the exercises. What did they do? We invite staff to appraisals in writing, including a copy of the appraisal form to fill in. The completed form is discussed during the appraisal itself with emphasis on giving constructive two-way feedback. So what would happen? They ask the staff to write an evaluation, okay? So I would write an evaluation of how, of if I'm happy or, or to show if I'm happy or not. And also the employer would write an evaluation and we both would sit together and compare notes and to see how well the employee is doing. So we would sit together during the appraisal and we would you, you would get, give constructive two-way feedback let's start from the end feedback means i get some information i get some response this response is two-way that means it's not only the employer who is talking or the employee who is talking no both are discussing what is happening, what is wrong, what is right, where have, uh, where have we improved, where, we, where have we gone wrong. It's two-way, mutual, going and coming. And it's constructive. The objective is to be positive. The, uh, the objective is to build. The objective is to benefit, not only to say bad things and to make you angry, no. So... The majority of our performance objectives aren't as easily quantify, quantifiable as, say, sales targets. So we use a scoring system to monitor performance. The manager and employee rate each objective on a scale of 1 to 4 and compare the results, which can be very helpful. Now, this is very important here. 
we have how can you evaluate performance you have to have performance objectives right so i am for example in this uh, zoo for animals i am responsible for feeding the animals i am also responsible for cleaning their cages i am not responsible for uh, taking care of the visitors or cutting uh, giving them uh, information or whatever these are my performance objectives feeding the animals and cleaning the cages okay so they are not sometimes they're not easily quantifiable like for example i cannot in the in the appraisal form some objectives are quantifiable like for example have you met your sales target now my sales target is uh, uh, i don't know 100000 if i uh, achieved 100 or 100 and more then i would say yes if i achieved less than 100000 i would say no so this is what quantifiable it can be measured but some answers are not quantifiable some questions are not quantifiable like for example uh, are you satisfied with your job well, it's not a yes no question but in this case there can be a scoring system a scale right one two three four five five is the highest and one is the lowest so i'm satisfied very much five i am not i'm satisfied but sometimes i'm not then you can tick three for example so this is what we call rate each objective on a scale of one to four and compare the results okay so in this case when do you use a scoring system when you want to monitor performance when you want to follow the performance of the employee you use the scoring system and you use a scale of one to four when the objectives are not quantifiable they are not yes no questions but they are the answer can be graded like for example one if it's very low two if it's not very low three if it's in the middle and four if it's high right but with yes no questions we call those quantifiable uh, ob uh, objectives okay is that okay here so far Okay. appraisals also provide an opportunity to set performance objectives we base ours on each employee's job description we talk to staff so that we can agree the objectives with them and they know what to expect okay so what do we have here we have uh, a point about agreeing objectives now we want you i want you to notice here that we usually say agree on objectives but you can also say agree the objectives without the preposition on okay now appraisals provide an opportunity to set performance objectives okay when i sit together with my employee we can discuss together what our performance objectives are and how much has been covered how can i know if you as an employee if you have met your objectives i look at your job description what are you responsible for so you are responsible for feeding the animals then i will evaluate whether you fed the animals well or not i cannot it's all about your job description what are your responsibilities what are you supposed to uh, what are you responsible for e i used to think that it was my responsibility to conduct all appraisals i have learned that delegating to line managers is equally effective and demonstrates trust in their abilities okay uh, this point is about mainly about who is going to do the appraising or the appraisal who is responsible for appraising the employees is it the big boss is it the manager only no here she says that in the before i thought it was my responsibility only 
I am supposed to conduct all appraisals and nobody else is responsible. And then she discovered that it is very positive to delegate, to share this responsibility with other uh, managers who are younger than her or who are less responsible that, than her. And this would empower them and make them more uh, in charge and more responsible. So she is not the only one who should be doing the appraisals, but it should be sort of hierarchical. In the early days, we also underestimated how long a thorough appraisal takes. A complete, detailed, accurate appraisal would take. It's counterproductive if, all the, if the appraisee feels their manager has one eye on the clock. We now allow a minimum of an hour and a half for each employee. Here we're talking about how long an appraisal should take. Okay, so in the beginning we underestimated. We uh, thought that it should take less than that. You can underestimate, that means you give a shorter or a less estimation. You can estimate, you give the right time or whatever, and you can overestimate, means, which means it's more than what is expected or what is right. So before, she says that we thought that an appraisal would take short, I mean, a short time. That means we just sit together for 15 minutes or whatever, and we talk together. But then they discovered that if you want to make a thorough appraisal, it takes a long time and not less than an hour or an hour and a half for each employee. And she says that we discovered that it's counterproductive, it's not productive, it's not beneficial if the appraisee or the one who's being appraised feels that you as a manager, you, are, you have an eye on the clock. That means you're constantly watching the time, always checking your watch. It gives the impression that you're in a hurry, that you're not interested, that uh, you're bored. So she says that now we give at least one hour and a half for each employee. G, providing an opportunity for staff to express their views and address any issues, to talk about their views and to solve any problems is a real morale booster as is giving praise where it is due. It does take time and hard work, but it enables us all to have real communication and really motivates people. So this is the conclusion, saying that appraisals are very important. They allow people to talk about what they want, what they like, what they don't like. They allow us to address any issues or to solve any problems. And this is a morale booster. It raises the spirit. It changes the mood. Okay. And also it allows us to communicate with each other, to reach out for each other. And this, of course, is very important for motivating people. And if you remember last semester, we had a whole unit about motivation and we discussed how important motivation is for production and for performance and for profit. This text is important for vocabulary, but you also have to know the different types of appraisals mentioned here. And you also have to know the expressions that are highlighted, that are underlined. You also have to know uh, how, performance, how, how appraisals are conducted and how they develop. So this text is quite important. You don't have to know, for example, the name of the marine uh, aquarium. You don't have to know the name of the manager. You don't know. You don't have to know how many employees are in this place, but you have to know the information in the text related to appraisals. Also, if you remember, I told you that this text is divided to paragraphs with letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So if you look at the top uh, of the text before uh, on the top uh, on the top part of the page you will find that you have these uh, titles for the uh, paragraphs so please read them again go back to your book read the 
uh, text again now that you have understood it and try to match the titles with the paragraphs after you do that come and check your answers okay now on page 91 you also remember i told you that you have uh, there are certain expressions that I underlined in blue where you are which you're supposed to know and here this is an exercise to, to show to check if you know if you've noticed or if you have learned those expressions so you're supposed to match the verbs in A with the noun phrases in B like what matches with uh, monitor conduct agree address give rate express these are the verbs and these are the nouns so stop the video now and try to match them and if you are not sure of yourself go back to the text and try to find out where those expressions are and revise what their meanings are okay now that you have uh, matched a with B, let's check the answers. What do you do? You monitor performance. You check how everybody's doing. You conduct appraisals. The process itself, conduct, is to do it. You agree objectives. And I said you can say agree objectives or agree on. Both are correct. What do you address? Issues. You solve the problems. And then you give feedback you can also get feedback you give if you're the uh, you're doing the appraisal and you get if you're the appraisee you rate the objectives on a scale and this is the one i told you about where you have a scoring system from one to four for example and you express your views this is an important exercise you need to know how to use those expressions Another exercise that we have is exercise number four. Now, we have those expressions, monitor performance, conduct appraisals, address issues, give constructive feedback. Now, you suppose now to match those expressions with the meanings. Like, for example, which one out of these seven means uh, monitor performance? which one means uh, give constructive feedback which ones mean rate each objective so again stop the video go back to the book page 91 exercise number four and match the expressions with the meanings and then come back please and check your answers here so Carry out an assessment of how well someone is doing at work. Conduct appraisals. Talk about your opinion of something. Express views. When you think about a problem, you address issues. When you tell someone that you're doing well, that you are, your performance is good, you're giving instructive, constructive feedback. Okay. Give points to measure how well someone is doing at work. Is rate objectives. Uh, check regularly how someone is doing your monitoring performance and agree objectives is to decide with someone else what you hope to achieve uh, at work because in order for me to perform well I have to agree that I can do this objective okay now we will move on to a very important part which is an audio script about a different type of an appraisal which is called assist the system is called 360 degrees feedback or 360 degrees appraisal okay uh, the questions that we want to try to answer is what is the central idea of 360 degrees appraisal how do they work what do raters comment on what two important things do you need to consider if you use 360 degrees feedback you don't have to answer these questions you just have to read the audio script and to find out again what 360 degrees appraisal is 
Before we start reading, let's look at this picture. Here you have the apresie, the picture in the middle. And what you have, you have arrows coming out saying peers, superior, peers, subordinates. Okay. Again, you have here somebody in the middle and all the different people are around him appraising his performance or her performance. Okay. So what is a 360 degree appraisal it's 360 degrees is a development tool where employees assess themselves using an appraisal form and several other people also give feedback by filling the same form this provides a more complete picture of appraising and evaluating anybody's performance what does that mean now for example i am a, an account or a teller in a bank okay my position as a teller makes me come in contact with uh, the or let's say I work in the sales department so my position in the sales department makes me come in contact with clients with buyers and and or retailers with uh, the my peers at work and my colleagues at work with production line with the hr so all of those people i there is a form an appraisal form which i fill myself rating my performance rating or evaluating or appraising my performance and there is also the same form is filled by all the people i come in contact with so in the first point, I say I am doing excellent. If all the people I come in contact with all say that I am perfect, then it's fine. But if I think I'm doing extremely well and my peers think I am not doing well, then there is a problem. What do we do? We sit together and this is development tool. Because if I know that I have a problem in with certain people or with in a certain area then I can develop and become better so it's not an appraisal form because I'm going to get a, a bonus or I will get promoted no it's a development tool please remember that this is very important okay let's read the uh, audio script it says here it's between an interviewer and a manager say is it right that you have moved on from top down staff appraisals to what you call 360 degree appraisals as you will see here we have uh, some words are highlighted in yellow and some words are highlighted in red the ones that are red are what we call the phrasal verbs and the ones that are in yellow are the is the terminology that you're supposed or the vocabulary that you're supposed to know and of course in general you're supposed to know what is 360 degree appraisal as information so he starts here but saying have you moved on have you changed from you, you you were doing something and you stopped doing it and you're now doing something else from top-down staff, staff appraisals to what you call 360 degrees top-down as the, the the name or as the word say indicates means top from top to down like the manager is uh, appraising the employer employee the employer appraising the employee from top to bottom the the uh, one who is in or who is bigger is appraising the one who is younger or smaller so he says have you stopped using top-down staff appraisal and now you're using 360 degrees no we still have the more traditional top-down appraisal but we are introducing 360 degrees appraisals as well because they have different functions in what way how is 360 degree different from top-down you have to think of 360 degree as a development tool it's a way to develop performance, as I said before. A trigger for change, a cause for change, rather than a way of deciding <clears throat> if anyone deserves a raise or a bonus. So how does it work? Now this is 
the definition of 360 degrees. Let's read it very slowly. Well, in 360 degrees, instead of just your boss appraising you, you have several different people giving feedback. So, what do we do? We hand out a feedback form to everyone you come in contact with. Your manager, your colleagues, people on your team, your customers, contractors, suppliers. Obviously, it depends on the type of job and the organization, but we try to involve as many different people as possible. And with this kind of peer rating, you end up with a more complete picture of how someone is doing in their job. So this is 360 degrees. Everyone you deal with fills the same form evaluating your performance and this same form is filled by you and you evaluate your, peer, your performance. Peer rating means that people who are equal to you are evaluating you. What is the result? A complete picture of your performance. The interviewer asked, and what do you ask them in this uh, appraisal form? Uh, we use a feedback form with a scoring or value judgment system. You remember? The value judgment or the scoring system is when you have a question and the answer is not yes or no, but there is a graded answer from one to two to three to four. Asking them to comment on various different assessment criteria, job skills, abilities, attitudes, behavior. Then you assess yourself using the same form to see how the two compare. So there are different standards of assessment. We assess their job skills and their abilities, how they behave with each other. Okay. And you yourself, you use the same form, and then we compare both forms and see if they are similar or not. Now, two important points, there are two important considerations with 360 degree appraisals. Two points that you have to bear in mind. First, it has to be completely, what? Confidential, in secret, I mean, I don't have to write, I don't write my name. This information is kept, uh, not, is, is not put in public. That way you get much more honest answers from people. And secondly, you need to make sure suitable counseling is available when you go, go through the results. When you look at, at those results and look at de in, the, in detail about these feedback results, you cannot do it on your own, you have to get somebody who is specialized counseling because this you will find many forms that might be, you know, somebody doesn't like you. So he might say that you are a very bad employee, but this is not professional. This is just personal. So that's why you have to get professional counseling to uh, find out if this is true information or this is something that is not fair. At the moment, you don't actually use it for appraising. So at the moment, you don't actually use it for appraising performance? No. It works better as a development tool to, to develop and improve performance. So it's not for appraising to decide if you will continue having this job, if you will have a raise, if you will be promoted. No, it's a development tool. We use it as part of our, our overall performance management, a way of bringing about or causing change rather than assessing or evaluating performance. Right, and does it really help? Now he's going to give us an example of someone who, uh, well, who had a problem, a certain problem with people his manager thought that he was an excellent performer, 
But when they did the 360 degree appraisal, they discovered that actually he is not perfect as he seems. Let's read. Yes, I had a new member on one of my teams recently. I thought he was very communicative, always reaching out to people. He's an extrovert, very sociable, very loud, very open, very enthusiastic and excited. Always said what he thought, and I like that. As his boss, I like that he always said what he thought. But when we did a 360-degree appraisal, the staff feedback was all negative, and he came over, he appeared, he seemed as domineering and forceful. Domineering means he's very tough, he's very uh, violent, controlling. As a result of this, he did change his behavior and became more accepted by the team. And that's what I mean about it being different from top-down appraisals. In that example, a top-down appraisal for, from, uh, from me would have told him to carry on, to continue, to go on speaking his mind. But it was the 360-degree feedback that made us aware of the need for change. So here we have an example of somebody whose boss in the top-down appraisal would have given him an A or a star or an excellent mark. And when he was evaluated by his peers, actually he had a big problem. So during the 360 degree appraisal, they would sit, the, his manager would sit with him and tell him you have a problem with communication. Then he would probably say, but actually I didn't mean that. I was just being friendly. So when he realizes or when she realizes what the problem is, this might change and this would be a development tool. That's why 360 degrees appraisals are very useful and beneficial. Now, here is an example, is an exercise where you're supposed to practice the words that we just read, criteria or standards, appraisals, evaluation, judgment, to judge or to evaluate again, tool, management and rating okay you'll stop the video now and mm, try to fill in the blanks these sentences with the words and then come back and we will check the answers together hello again let's check the answers how does 360 degree differ from a more traditional top-down staff appraisal in what ways is a 360 degree a development tool, a way, a means? What sort of assessment? Which word matches with assessment? Assessment, criteria, standards. Who would carry out the peer? Uh, what's the word that matches with peer? Peer means equal, like you and your colleague, peer rating. As a rater, how honest would you be in your value, value, judgment of your peers, how you are judging your peers? And you have a role in performance. Of course, this would be management. Performance management means managing performance. Another exercise on the same page is related to the phrasal verbs that were highlighted in the text. Okay, we have here the phrasal verbs that were highlighted. Again, go back to the text or look in your book on page 91. You will find the phrasal verbs in the text. We want to know their meanings. As you always know, this exercise is always very important for the exam. So please go and match them and then come back and check your answers, give, get as a result, end up with, give an impression, come over, seem, stop doing something and go to start another is move on, that's right, distribute, when you distribute forms, uh, hand out, 
Look at something very carefully. Look at the details. Is get through. And finally, continue is carry on. Okay. Let's go to, all right, let's go now to page 130, practice file. And here we will again practice the words that we just took together, which are, here you have the words, they are jumbled up, they are mixed up, and you're supposed to know these words. It's like a game, of course. So have a look at these words, stop the video, and try to find out what these words are, and then come back and check how clever you were. All right, hello again. What's the first word? Sadder. It is. First word is address. Second word, agree. CC denoto, what's that? Conducts. Monitor. What's this long word? Constructive, express, and objective. Now, what are you supposed to do? Again, please turn the video off and go to your book and try to fit those words in those spaces and then come back check your answers do that please turn off the video or pause it and go and check your and finish this exercise come back and check your answer okay you come back number one monitor performance two conduct an appraisal three could we set up a meeting two what do you what's the word that matches with issues address some of the issues uh, during uh, the appraisal we rate each objective the weekly meeting gives us an opportunity to express our views what do you give what kind of feedback constructive feedback and finally today we're going to agree my objectives right another exercise is we have here the words that we just took together, peer, tool, value, appraisal, performance, criteria. Come on, let's uh, fill in the blanks with those words. Now we know what we should do. Turn off the video and go to your book or, uh, or don't go to your book. Just use the screen here and match the words. Right? Okay. Low. Come back. One, performance management is not just about carrying out top-down stuff. Appraisals. It's about encouraging change and making sure everybody, uh, uh, making sure everybody gets the chance to perform well. A 360-degree appraisal system is a really useful development tool for doing this. In our department, we spend time carefully working out the assessment criteria we are going to use. And people enjoy taking part in the process. They like having the chance to make uh, peer, uh, to make value judgments on their colleagues' performance. And if they're being assessed, they take it very seriously because what is the word we use when we are rating our equals? Peer rating is important. All right, again, another exercise. And here it's an exercise related to the phrasal verbs and what are the prepositions that we use with these phrasal verbs. Turn off, go do it, and then come back, check your answers. Okay, let's check the answers. What is the preposition with hand, handed out? We go through the form that means we look at the details my manager plans to carry continue on i usually come what's the preposition that means i seem i appear across or over you remember we said come over and here the book says come across so both are correct come across and come over i've decided to move 
on can to change stop doing something and start doing something else i think i will end up with this is the final result okay now let's go to the expert view and the last page of the unit page 95 and here we have a short expert view about the following two broad ways of evaluating and improving performance are inside out and outside in evaluation this is another way of describing 360 degree inside out evaluation answers the question how well do i think i am doing so you ask yourself you ask yourself am i am i doing well or not inside out and requires you to set your own bet you set benchmarks for performance to set the standards and the criteria for performance where do you get those benchmarks do you put them yourselves do you say i'm going to do this or that no they come from they're drawn from industry standards what does your what are your company's standards and you must meet those standards performance must be measured against these benchmarks in a formal and regular way so you cannot just say, just say well i'm good no this good how good you are is related to how good your company wants you to be what are the benchmarks of your company <clears throat> and as frequently as is appropriate now the other type of evaluation is outside in evaluation answers the question how well do they think i am doing and requires you to seek 360 degree feedback from customers suppliers and any other stakeholders in the value chain this feedback is best obtained through a formal questionnaire which should be administered regularly. So the two ways here of, perform, of evaluating performance in 360 degree, the two main questions is, okay, the first one is inside out evaluation where you ask yourself. Outside in evaluation is how well do they, those people I come in contact with, think I am doing. And as we said, this is a development tool if you want your employee to perform better next year or in the future. Okay, here you have to know and you have to study the different ways and you have to know the terms inside out and outside in and to relate this to 360 degrees. Okay, now we come to the grammar of this uh, lesson the grammar is very simple third and mixed conditionals you remember the conditional if this is the third and mixed conditional use the third let's just skip this and go to the read it on your own of course but let's look at the uh, this table past situation and past result if plus past perfect gives you a past result that means if you had concentrate concentrated in the past past perfect here you would you wouldn't have made that error past result so what does it mean here you're talking about use the third conditional to talk about things that did not happen in the past you did not concentrate and you imagine what happened if it had been different so when you use it to express you criticize actions you express your regret okay so in the if clause we talk about an imagined past situation and in the other clause we talk an, about an imagined past result okay because you did not concentrate and you did make that error if i had studied harder I would have passed the exam this is a past situation I didn't study harder and I didn't pass the exam ok 
Okay, so we're talking here about uh, an imagined past situation and imagined past result. Both did not happen. Notice how negative changes to positive and positive changes to positive to negative, which means here the real past is you didn't give me the information. The imagined past is if you had given me the information, I wouldn't have made the error. Okay, so the real situation is you didn't give me the information. The real result is I made the error. So everything here is hypothetical. If he had taken care of his health, he wouldn't have been sick now. But he didn't take care of his health and he is sick now. So we're talking about an imagined situation, an imagined result. If the result close, in the result close, you might have or could have to talk about a less certain result. Like for example, I might say, I would have passed, I could have passed to make it less certain. If you had helped me, we might have finished on time. Okay, so here it's less certain. It's not very positive, it's not very strong. The mixed conditional is changes the verb forms in conditional sentences to talk about an imagined past and imagined present, not past result. How is that? If you, past perfect, if you had done what I advised, here I'm not going to use the uh, wouldn't have, we wouldn't be in trouble now. If I hadn't won the money, I would still be working in a supermarket. So we're talking about the past result. I did win, win the money. Okay, but if I hadn't won the money, what would happen? Up till now, I would be still working in a supermarket. If you want to use the mixed conditional, which is past situation and present result, there must be a keyword in the sentence. Like here, the keyword is now. And here, what's the keyword? Yes, that's right, still. So in this case, you use the past perfect with would and present infinitive be, be. But here, you use the past perfect with the past participle and have. The last part of the grammar lesson is about perfect models. A model is when you use could or might or would. Perfect is when you add the verb have. So could have, might have, would have. Let's read the sentences. It's a good thing you didn't invest that uh, in that company. You could have lost everything. It's possible. You might have lost. You would have lost. Of course, would is stronger than could. When do you use those perfect models? Usually when you are angry, uh, regretting, criticizing. Like, for example, you sh should have asked me for a permission. You shouldn't have made this. You could have told me that you were not coming. Of course, all of these are correct. I mean, you, can, you cannot say which is correct and which is wrong. No, they're all correct. It depends on how angry you are. Like, for example, you could have asked me for a permission is less than you should have asked me for a permission. Okay, you also should know that these are called perfect models. Okay, after reading again what we've just said and studying the third mixed conditionals and the third conditions, the perfect models, we will go to some of the exercises that you will have to do on your own. Okay, uh, here you have complete these sentences with the correct form of the verbs in brackets sometimes more than one answer is possible. Like you could say, 
a, a different answer and both would be correct. We will be providing one answer. Let me do the first one for, with you. That was a missed opportunity. If we buy the shares in April, we make a lot of money. We didn't buy the shares. We didn't make a lot of money. So in this case, the answer would be, if we had bought, we would have made. Okay, now start doing these exercises. Remember, when we use the mixed conditional. The mixed conditional, there must be a key in the sentence, a key word in the sentence to show you that this is happening now. It is a present result. So, turn off, go to your book, do the exercise, and come back and check your answer. Okay, let's see the answers. Number two, it's just as well we took the train to the airport. We would have missed or could have missed or might have missed or, is cor or are correct if we had driven because there was an accident on the motorway. So we didn't miss the flight, we didn't drive, we, didn't, we, we took the train. If I study harder when I was at school, I need not to go to language classes now. So here we have a keyword for mixed conditional. I had studied, I wouldn't need to go. All right. They called the strike off because if it go on for any longer, the company shut down. Had gone, would have shut down. Of course, I've got mo my mobile. If I not bring it with me, I not talking to you. I not talk to you now. Now, if I hadn't brought it, I wouldn't be talking to you now. This is all your fault. If you pack more carefully, none of this happen. If you, yes, had packed, none of this would have happened. If we leave an hour earlier, we be there by now instead of being stuck in this traffic jam. If we had left, we would be, but we're stuck. This is the present situation. I understand why you made that decision. If I be in your position, I think I do the same. If I had been, I would have done. So this lesson is important because you need to know to, to follow the mixed conditional and to know the difference between third conditional and mixed conditional. Okay, now let's go to the final exercise uh, in this, uh, uh, on this topic. Here we have to rewrite the phrase in italics using could have, should have, or might have. Here you can have more than one correct answer. Let me do the first one with you. That wasn't a very sensible decision. You ran the risk of being dismissed. Now we want to change the italics, italicized words here. You ran the risk of being dismissed to you could have been dismissed. You can also say you might have been dismissed or you should have been dismissed. All would be correct. So again, you should stop the video now and try to do these exercises and come back, try to use either could have or should have or might have. Sometimes all the answers are correct and sometimes only one is correct. Come back and check your answers. Okay, so the second one, what a pity didn't come five minutes earlier. You might have missed the chance. So you have missed the chance of, being, of seeing Anne. You could have seen Anne or you might have seen Anne. Number three, you were wrong to speak. Should be, you shouldn't have spoken. Here you don't have any other alternative because you're giving advice. I am irritated you didn't let me know. So you might have let me know or you could have let me know. It was a mistake not to send the price list. We didn't send the, the price list. Again, I'm giving a, a advice. You should have sent. We are lucky we didn't lose. 
the contract does that mean we lost it or we didn't no we didn't lose but we could have lost the contract and finally I'm irritated you didn't call to say some the meeting has been cancelled so I'm angry you might have called or you should have called or you could have called all would be correct in the exam I wouldn't give you this choice so but I just want you to know how you can rewrite the and give the same meaning and now we come to the end of this presentation and the end of the syllabus uh, we have ha we have two online units chapter 14 or unit 13 sorry and unit uh, 15 new ideas and uh, performance in this unit you're supposed to know what are the different types of performances you should know the phrasal verbs and you should know what are the correct prepositions you should also know the expressions and should know the grammar uh, which we just did together uh, i wish you all the luck stay safe stay at home i will try to get in touch with you again to sort of wrap up uh, of uh, to wrap up all what is going to be included in the exam in case we don't meet again but hopefully all this will be over and we will meet very soon thank you and take care